Welcome to GPSX Tutorial 1, Building a Plant Layout. In this tutorial, we will introduce the GPSX user interface, construct a simple plant layout, create graphical and interactive controls, and run an interactive simulation of the plant. Creating a layout. After starting GPSX, select the Carbon Nitrogen Library or CNLib from the Model Library drop-down menu. As you can see, GPSX has numerous libraries. The process table on the left-hand side of the GPSX window contains the icons we'll need to construct the plant's layout. We will start by opening the influent group and placing the wastewater influent object on the drawing board. Next, we will open the suspended solids process group and place the plug flow tank on the drawing board. Finally, open the clarification and settling group and place the circular secondary clarifier beside the plug flow tank. Let's zoom in to get a better view of the layout. On the menu bar, click on the locator button to bring up the locator window. The locator window allows you to zoom in and out and move around the drawing board. By dragging out boxes on the locator window, you can change which parts of the drawing board are visible on the screen. The locator window displays the full drawing area allowed by GPSX. You can also zoom the layout in and out by rotating the mouse wheel. Once you are satisfied with the view, let's specify the connections between the objects. We will start by moving the mouse to the output of the implant object. You can tell that this connection point is the output since the cursor becomes an arrow pointing away from the object. If you move the mouse over to the plug flow tank input, we can see that the arrow points towards the tank. To connect input to the output, simply click and drag. To complete the connection, release the mouse. We have now successfully connected the influent to the plug flow tank. We will now connect the tank effluent to the clarifier. To demonstrate what happens, let's try and connect the effluent from the clarifier to the effluent of the plug flow tank. As you can see, GPSX does not allow this invalid connection. To complete the layout, let's connect the underflow from the clarifier to the return flow point on the tank. In this example, excess sludge will be wasted from the bottom of the secondary clarifier. Since this model isn't concerned with the downstream processing of the sludge, it isn't necessary to specify a connection. Now that we have a drawing completed, let's add some labels. Right-click on the wastewater influent icon and select Labels. Let's call this process Influent and its output INF. You must click the Accept button for changes to take effect. Similarly, label the plug flow tank and clarifier. We'll call the plug flow tank Aeration Tank, the overflow MLSS. Notice that the label given to the influent is automatically set. Let's call the clarifier Final Clarifier 1, the overflow FE1, the pump WAS1, and the underflow RAS1. Remember to accept these changes. As you can see, right now only the object labels are visible. To turn the labels on and off, click on the label button and tag on objects and streams. Next, let's verify the object so we are using the models we want. Right click on the object and mouse over to models. Ensure that the model selected for the influent object is set to COD state. Set the aeration tech model to mantis and secondary clarifier model to Simple1D. Now that we have our model drawn and labeled, let's save it. Click File on the menu bar and click Save As. Give it a file name and click Save. Now let's change some of the properties in the process. Let's set the influent composition. Right-click on the influent object and select Composition, then Influent Characterization. For this tutorial, we'll change the total COD from 430 to 380 and the TKN from 40 to 35. Notice that the changed values are highlighted in blue. Now click Accept to accept the changes. We'll now change the clarifier's wastage rate. Right-click on the clarifier and select Input Parameters, then Operational. Change the pump flow entry from 40 meters cube per day to 60. Click Accept. When you're creating a layout, always remember to specify site properties of the plant. Click the Plant Wide Properties button and change the liquid temperature to 22 degrees Celsius. Click Accept to save the changes. 
Now that we have a fully specified layout, let's save it and build the plant model. You can tell anytime that there are unsaved changes if there is a star beside the file name. To build the model and generate source and binary code, simply click on the simulation button. This will also move you from the GPSX modeling environment to the simulation environment. You can see the build progress in the displayed window. Creating input controls. The best way to learn about the simulation environment is to jump in. So let's build an interactive simulation to investigate how changes in influent flow rate will affect effluent quality. To begin, let's create a control for the influent flow. Right click on influent object on the layout and select flow, then flow data. Click and drag the influent flow variable to the input control area about the layout. Notice that a new tab titled Input 1 has been created with the input control. Multiple controls can be placed on a single tab or as many tabs as required. In the current state, the flow rate can be entered numerically or changed using the slider. Let's change the properties of this control. Click on the Input Control Properties button on the Input Control tab. Here you can set the units, min and max range, and the type of control. We'll set the minimum flow rate to zero, the maximum flow rate to 12,000 meters cube per day, and we'll keep the control type as slider. Take a minute to play with the input control. Try entering the flow rate numerically. Try adjusting the flow rate with the slider. Notice that the flow value changes with the slider position. To reset the input to the default value, click the reset button. Creating output displays. At this point, the plant model has been prepared and an interactive input control has been created. The next step is to create output displays to observe the results of a simulation. GPSX provides eight different types of output displays. Notice that a standard unit process output, also known as a quick display output, is automatically generated when the model is built. If you want to add additional process unit to the output window, Simply double-click on the process in the layout window, and a new quick display window tab for the process will appear. In addition to the quick display outputs, let's create a graph of the influence flow. To start, we'll need a new tab to work with. New tabs can be created by clicking on the New Tab button. Create a graph of the influence flow by right-clicking on the influence flow object and selecting Output Variables, then Flow. Drag and drop the flow variable to the new output tab. Move the cursor over to the effluent point on the clarifier. It will become an arrow when you are on the right spot. Right click on the final effluent stream and select Output Variables, then Composite Variables. Drag and drop the total suspended solids to the same graph. Resize the graph using the Auto Arrange button to get a better look. To edit the output graph, Click on the Output Graph Properties button. From this window, the graph title, the type of graph, the axis, and line colors can be changed. We'll call this graph Influent Flow and Effluent TSS. For this graph, we're going to want to scale the axis separately. Set the units for flow to meters cubed per day and the total suspended solids to grams per meter cube. Next, Change the maximum flow to 10,000 and the maximum total suspended solids to 150. If you want to change the color of the data in the graph, click on the colored box and select a new color. Finally, accept the changes. You can also access the output graph properties by right-clicking on the graph and selecting options displayed in the menu. We are now ready to run the model. All of the controls needed to run a simulation can be found on the Simulation Control Toolbar, located at the bottom of the screen. Let's specify a simulation duration of 20 days and run the simulation. Adjust the flow rate while the simulation is running. If the simulation proceeds too quickly, we can slow it down by inserting a delay. You can add a delay by putting a number into the Delay Entry field using a Stop, Communication and Delay drop-down menu on the Simulation Control toolbar. Let's try running the simulation again, this time with the delay. As you can see, if the flow is high enough, you see a significant increase in the effluent suspended solids due to clarifier overload.
We will now take a more detailed look at our plant's performance by investigating the effect of increased flow on the clarifier. We will set up an output graph displaying the solids profile inside the final clarifier. To do this, create a new output tab. Right-click on the clarifier object and select Output Variables, then Suspended Solids. Drag the Suspended Solids variable to the newly created output window. Resize the graph. Right-click on the graph and change the output graph type to a horizontal bar chart. We'll also give the graph a title, Final Clarifier Solids Profile. To rename Input and Output tabs, simply double-click on it and enter a new name. We will now simulate a steady-state condition with the designed flow of 2000 m3 per day and investigate the change in the solids profile inside the clarifier by running the model at a higher flow rate. Run a 10-day simulation. You can see a bar chart profiling the solids distribution inside the final clarifier. Now, let's increase the flow rate to a higher value, say 5000 m3 per day, and let's adjust stop to 20 days. Click the Continue button to continue the simulation from where it left off. You will notice the bar chart profiling the solids distribution inside the clarifier will change to reflect the buildup of solids due to the higher flows. Lastly, let's create a Sankey diagram. Sankey diagrams are useful when we want to visually see the overall distribution of a certain variable in a plant. Run a simulation and click the Sankey diagram button on the output control bar. This will display a Sankey diagram. Take a minute to play with the tools displayed above the diagram. You can choose to display the Sankey graph and values of the variable in each screen by checking the boxes under Display. You can choose the variable to display on the diagram by clicking on the drop-down menu under Variables. You can customize the appearance of the Sankey diagram under Sankey. Finally, the export function can be used to print and save the diagram. And that's it! That's how EasyGPSX makes it to build and simulate a simple plant layout. Thank you for watching this video. If you're interested in information on our other software products such as CapTatworks for preliminary design and costing, Toxcam for industrial wastewater treatment modeling, or WattPro for drinking water treatment modeling, you can visit our website at www.hydromantis.com for further information.